<laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> and a very good morning to you and yours and everybody across the wide, wonderful world that we live in, of course. Uh, but especially if you're South African, wherever in the world you are. And my favorite South African who's somewhere else in the world, well, one of them, okay, I can't just say my absolute favorite, but you are one of them, Jenny, is Jenny Baxter yeah. sitting in <laughs> sitting in on team in France. Um, and of course, this is, what is this, Jenny? We are doing sapeople.com and welcome to it. How are things over there? How's it, Mal? Things are really well. Um, I don't know if you've heard, but we are kind of all getting into heat wave uh, situation here. So it's pretty hot and the athletes, the South African athletes in the US have been battling with the heat. And um, But yeah, at least we've got the sea, at least we can swim. Yes, I, I mean, even in England, um, I heard from uh, somebody who I used to work for who's now living over in England. Of course, that's Tanya Harford, the tennis player and the organizer of the original 947 cycle challenge, et cetera, et cetera. And she's just like, it is so hot over in England at the moment that she's actually not knowing what to do with herself. And of course, um, well, it's a very cloudy day in Johannesburg today. I always get very worried when it's cloudy in winter. It's not supposed to be like that. And it makes us feel quite it's like being in, in living in London. Not, not a good idea. <laughs> anyway, so enough about the weather because we like to talk about the weather because essentially we're British and that's what we do. Uh, not really, but anyway. <laughs> okay, so, so what is obviously the main story has to have been snatching defeat from the jaws of victory of the Springboks <laughs> on Saturday, uh, which I found quite depressing. I didn't want to watch the last five minutes. I kept saying to my friends, I've, I have a bad feeling about this. I know <laughs> that they're going to lose and I do not want to watch the last five minutes and I should actually have walked out because it was very depressing. But we're sitting there. But you know what's the good thing? What? Is that at least it makes this Saturday's match even more exciting because now you, you have to have the decider. Well, as long as they're playing the, e, uh, the A team, not the E team. <laughs> the <laughs> A team. Because, I mean, obviously, look, I mean, how many, there were like, what, 15 new, new people coming in, 15 changes or something. And I could have actually reached into my television and grabbed Urban Etzebeth's arm, ripped it <laughs> off and hit him with the wet end. Two penalties in the space of a couple of minutes. I mean, really, Brew, what are you doing? Okay, oh, do you not... Don't just don't do that stuff. Anyway, but he got you know his, gonna his be hundredth. His, he got his hundredth uh, test cap. Hey, yeah. Yeah, oh, he's on getting Saturday it this Saturday. Yeah. Yes, yes. So he, it's a pretty big thing. But yeah, hopefully he plays better. That's exactly what I was going to say. Exactly. Yeah. If he doesn't play well on his hundredth, then there's going to be hurt. The word starts with a K. I'm not going to say it on there. <laughs> <laughs> Although South African people understand it, the rest of the world not so much. Okay, so that was the, a big story. The biggest story for me, of course, is um, one of my the very two losses. Yeah, yeah. You know, my 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 one of my favorite favorite people and and somebody who I'd known. Well, I mean, I worked with Barry Ronger on on prime time. First of all, um, and that was back in 1981 around about 81, 82, that I worked on that uh, magazine show. Do you remember with uh, Martin Locke, Dorian Berry, Kate Turkington, and Barry Ronger? And um, working with him, he was just an absolute divine man, and worked with him vaguely over the years, but of course- So what were uh, you was, doing? I was a production, production secretary, who couldn't oh, count nice. backwards from 15 to 10, because I always skipped <laughs> out to 11 for some reason. But anyway, working with him, and then of course, getting to know all the people at the SABC, and then meeting up with Kevin Savage, who, um, did Late Night Live and I met him on that. And of course I was always hanging out at um, the 5FM studios when he actually joined 5FM after leaving um, Capital. And mm. yeah, I'd known for at least four years now that um, he had cancer and that it had metastasized and, and it was stage four, et cetera, et cetera. But it doesn't matter how long you've known that somebody has oh, been I ill know. for, it's still one of those things. And I mean, Kevin, okay, mm -hmm. and I know that Rafe Levine is probably sitting there and gnashing his teeth, because I've always said he has the best voice in the world. Um, mm -hmm. But <laughs> Kevin's voice still, it was one of oh, my well, favorite, super. favorite things. Absolutely the best yeah. voice, yeah. yeah. Um, and you know what I loved, you know, because obviously it was just, uh, you know, John Burks just a couple of weeks ago, and then yeah. to lose these two legends. But what I love is just the outpouring of stories and memories mm. and 
and just discovering, you know, we always knew these guys were great, but discovering some of the things they did that people never kind of advertised before because it was private. And, and they were phenomenal human beings, not yeah. just uh, brilliant broadcasters. And Kevin everything. was naughty, very, very naughty. <laughs> and Barry, Barry could, could gossip so beautifully, you know, he wouldn't hold yeah. back. It was, it was just divine. And in those days, you know, you really could gossip because you knew it wouldn't get onto social media or anything, you know, it was, and it that's was exactly, between friends. Exactly what they were saying on Hot, uh, because they had a whole day worth of, of tribute to Kevin Savage, because of course he was still, um, in yeah. fact, on Saturday, in the morning, I was listening to, they put out one of his repeats and of course he, he died in the afternoon. So it was, and I'd spent the entire morning listening to Kevin Savage and oh. it was just, and then of course all the people saying, thank goodness there wasn't social media back in the day because we could get away with a lot more. And I mean, you and I were part of that whole scene as well at the time with the 5FM jocks. Remember when know. Martin Bailey is a sex god happened? Uh, that was one of the. In fact, I think we should get hold of Martin from where he's living. Where is he in? in um, he's which in county England. is he in? He's um, in? I think he's down south. Uh, starts with a C. Yes, I'm also thinking Cornwall. There we go. That's he's it. in with Radio Cornwall. I think we must just get hold of him and say, right, dude, I think it's time to chat, and then we'll get hold of Rafe Levine and tell him that he must join us as well, so we can and have Jason. a chat. With him. And Jason, of course, yes. Because I mean, Jason he, really was a sex god, Jason Roberts. He, you know, <laughs> he, was, he was young and hot. Well, yeah, I worked with him, um, not just in radio, but also, of course, we did movie focus together. So we had a lot of fun doing that. And I mean, you know, the, I, I know that, thank goodness, there wasn't social media in those days. Those things that were happening at that time were quite interesting. But anyway, yes, I, I was very tearful on, on um, Saturday and Sunday about mm. Kevin. And, yeah. With Barry, it was so interesting how actually he passed away the Sunday a week before, before but, yeah. but you asked that it not be broadcast until yeah. a week later. Yeah, well, I, I think that's actually quite sensible, to be honest. It gives the, yeah. the, the family a bit of time to get their ducks in a row. Because yeah. ducks are important, of course, except when it's in cricket. All right. Anyway, so there we go with that. Lots of fun and lots of happiness and, of course, condolences to the family. Right, and Jen, what have we got in the way of news for expats? Um, well, Gary Player's been quite entertaining. Um, he's in the UK at the moment. Uh, he's at the 150th Open, mm. uh, and which he's won before himself, and he's taking part in the celebration of Champions Challenge. So there's, you know, wonderful photos of Gary out there. He's living the dream, um, just in his element. But one of the cutest things is that he actually went to Wimbledon again uh, to watch the finals, women's and men's, and he posted this photo of himself at Wimbledon, and um, he's being photobombed by Tom Cruise. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my nerves. Like, okay. You can't help but notice, hang on, that's Tom Cruise, where's, where's Gary? Um, <laughs> but, but for Gary, you know, it's it's wonderful how he also always reminds us of his humanity. You know, he's not just this great tennis player who's been a legend and, and for South Africa. But as he said, it was such a pleasure to be back to be back in London. But it was the first time that he was at Wimbledon without his wife Vivian. Mm. And she absolutely loved tennis. And so he said it wasn't the same, but that he could feel her joy was there in spirit. So oh. Yeah, it's tough having to learn to live alone after all these years. Mm. It's much easier when we, you're younger like us, hey? <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, and I see also, I mean, I was just listening on the radio on, on my way in this morning and um, about the, they haven't quite reached day zero down in Geberge, mm. Geberge, um, <clears throat> but they're, they're trying desperately to plug up all the leaks. They I think they said that they're losing like 18 million litres of water a day through bad pipes and leaky pipes and bad infrastructure down in that region. Um, and, and they it, fixed <clears throat> some at least. But. Yeah, but the thing is, is that, I mean, majority of the households don't have water and they're being given, uh, if they go to the people who are putting up water tankers, um, they're allowed 50 liters per household per day, which is really ridiculous. But anyway, so- How much do I mean, you put in a bath? More than that. Shower. 
Oh, oh my goodness. And yeah. so this is for everything. So so I don't know if you saw uh, as well, I thought we should do a, a, a kind of a plea to the expats is apart from the humans who clearly need as much help as possible and donate to Gift of the Givers who are helping, mm. um, Addo Elephant National Park has also issued a huge, urgent, urgent plea for them to actually save the animals. Mm. So last year, the, for them, this is their worst drought in a hundred years. And last year, thanks to donations, they were able to make six water... Yes thingies, wells, what are those things called, where you get water Ball out holes. of the ground? Ball holes, thank <laughs> it's you. called a borehole, yeah, one of those things, yeah. <laughs> like <wearing> charades. Um, <laughs> but anyway, they, they now need to urgently make some more in another part of the park where, you know, the, the elephants will die if they don't get mm. their water. So, so please, 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 if you can, please donate to Adder Elephants. Okay, and there were, uh, the good news as well was it wasn't a particularly a large amount, but there was rain apparently, the, I think either yesterday evening or not, but obviously not a lot, but yeah, let's just keep our fingers crossed, although yeah. hope is not actually Holding an ongoing guns. objective. Yeah, so we can do that and thoughts and prayers and all of that, yes. but we actually need some real action, not just hoping. Yes. Okay, so, so what is this hope about is um, <clears throat> the, the Delville Wood Commemorative Weekend? Oh, it's just kind of really interesting, but, um, and you may have already known this, but 63 hectares of France is owned by South Africa. So, um, because of a tragedy, of course, it was a uh, Delville Wood battlefield, a mm. lot of South Africans died there. And, um, and so the Jock of the Bushveld author, Sir Percy Fitzpatrick, Yes. And he was a politician as well. Um, he bought that land and presented it to South Africa. And then what happens is, this is just tradition, the French government then bought it back for a franc, mm. but then allows South Africa to use it forever as a memoriam. So I think my mother's been there. It's, it's really beautiful. And um, there's, you know, oak trees. And, and the stories are so interesting. You know, the oak trees actually came from Stellenbosch which were from trees that were taken from England to South Africa before. And then, okay. and then they went back to South Africa and got them and, and brought them back to France kind of thing. Um, and this weekend in, in Dundee at the Talisa Museum, Talana Museum, sorry, there's going to be a commemoration all weekend, a really beautiful, they've got lots of events planned. So if you're in the area, head along there. Oh, don't we all wish we were in France at the moment? <laughs> yeah, no, but this is in South Africa, Dundee, South oh, is Africa. It oh, is it happening in Dundee in South Africa? I just yes, I want yes. to go to the 63 hectares in, in France, actually. Yeah, no, you can. Please come. All right, I will do. Okay, and then the, the last thing, which was, uh, could be quite interesting for expats, of course, which I also heard, because I do listen to the radio in my car, okay, but most of the time I'm listening to podcasts, so I don't listen to radio that often. Um, that, uh, uh, how many people from, uh, of the players from Banyana Banyana have gone down with COVID? Oh, I don't know. It just keeps changing. But I think it started with a coach. Um, but but they haven't really got symptoms. However, they are being isolated and they yeah. can't play. Yeah. Um, so that's the problem. I mean, it's such a pity, isn't it? But it should be if you're... But I suppose they are still contagious and they could give it to someone who's vulnerable. For those, of course, who don't know what Banyana Banyana is, it's the female South African soccer team. And, and it's really important that they get better because um, they're playing the quarterfinals again in Morocco. Mm. And should they win, this will qualify them for the 2023 World Cup in really? Australia and, and New Zealand. So, so like, oh, you know, it would be awful if we don't have enough players on the field. No, absolutely. Well, I'm they sure they've got so um, well. subs in there. And on the COVID thing, I mean, the, the World Health Organization has just put it out again that, in fact, the pandemic is far from over um, and they've seen an escalation in cases. So, you know, even if we're not wearing masks in our country, please just remember to sanitize and don't go and let people breathe in your face and, and stay away. I still keep, I've become so socially distant. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to, I don't even leave my house if I can help it, to be honest with you. I like it. I like, I've learned how to enjoy my own company. Uh, at least I know it won't be boring. 
Um, okay, so, <laughs> um, I'm joking. I do listen. I listen to podcasts. I find myself. I keep myself amused. <laughs> Things to do during load shedding. Yes, uh, and let's just hope that that picks itself up at some stage as well because it's it's starting to get extraordinarily boring now. I heard. Um, I heard an interesting thing here though is that um, just up the road in Valbonne, apparently they've been switching off the lights between midnight and five in the morning. To also, you know, just because of the whole Russia situation and everything, mm. um, to try and preserve our power. Well, shame. Um, one of our, our South African expats who lives in London, Rose, Rosie Fiore, or Fiore Burt now, she's an author, um, has done amazing stuff with uh, book deals in England and everything, but she's from South Africa. She sent a message over on Facebook saying, how do I work out, I'm coming to South Africa, how do I work out um, when the load shedding is going to be happening in this area? And we're like, Eskom's a push, darling. That's, that's the only way we all go, okay? So you've got to download the app and just see because none of us know, okay? Who knows? Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. All right, so what news do you have in from expats? I see a lot of sporting stuff. And we're, should we start off, first of all, with um, uh, Elon Musk? I saw that you put it up on, on um, SA People on Facebook. When he was and trolling Twitter. Trolling Twitter, yeah. Because, I mean, that whole thing is On just Twitter. Ridiculous. Oh, good Lord. If you haven't seen it, go and have a look. Um, it's just, <laughs> it's very, very funny. I, I saw that they said today that actually they, because just for anybody who doesn't know, Elon Musk is trying to pull out of the Twitter deal because they never ha have told him exactly how many um, spam bots they have. Mm. But I did see a, one of the Twitter guys said today that they get rid of at least half a million spam bots every morning before we get onto Twitter. I think he's talking to the people in America. Because okay. the rest of the world's on all the time. But can you believe that half a million every day? It's just, you know, whenever on, on, on Esther people, whenever I see people have suddenly started following us and they have not followers themselves, you kind of know, oh, okay. <laughs> but like, yeah. what is their point? It's, it's I like, yeah, I don't get revolting. it. I also. I also get, don't get it. I mean, I have so many yeah. controls. I'm so, so control freak. Um, I have so many <laughs> controls on, on who can do what on any of my social media. But anyway. So, and, but do you yep. know what? Uh, Elon Musk did say something really useful this week. Really, really useful. That I think a lot of people don't realize how useful it is. Um, he, just, he just tweeted, when you go to sleep, don't eat for three hours before you go to sleep. And, um, and raise your your pillow or your bed at least three to five inches um, for what? and the reason is that so many people don't realize that they have acid reflux and it's called silent reflux when you don't know that you've got it so mm. you might you might get a tickle in your throat you might choke during the night you might cough a little um or you might just not have a good night's sleep and you don't realize you're not uh, you know what's causing it yeah. And it's and it's acid reflux. So to follow his and acid reflux can actually lead to hideous consequences. Mm. So um, which people also don't, you know, when I was in South Africa drinking lots of champagne, we were popping all those rennies and nobody actually <coughs> said there's repercussions, you know. Excuse me, what were you doing drinking champagne in South Africa? <laughs> You're not allowed um, to drink champagne in South Africa. You have to drink our sparkling wines. There was a checker sparkling one in a yellow that looked a bit like Verve Clicquot. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so it was really, it's really, really good advice from him. And also sleep on your left side, not your right. No, but if, if I you... sleep on my left hand side, then I end up getting more lines on my left side of my face. Yeah, but the lines, mm. if you're getting a good night's sleep, the lines won't be so bad. Oh, listen, I sleep like a murdered Humpty every single night, so oh, I don't have any issue with that. Okay. okay, well, let's get on to the sport that I kind of mentioned and, and alluded to a little earlier. What is going on there that um, has, has tickled your fancy? Um, well, Andy Burkett has got South Africa's first gold medal at the World Games, which is being held in Birmingham, Alabama in the USA, where it has been very hot and where he, you know, he, he really battled the race before with um, asthma. So for him to then do so well the next day and win gold for South Africa, which is pretty rare, I think it's our seventh medal since 1997 or something. Okay. So this is pretty huge. At the last World Games, we only got one bronze. So, um, so well done to him. He just, he, mm -hmm. the, the guy who was coming first, he just held on to him. Like he just 
wouldn't wouldn't let go. Wouldn't back and, down. Yeah, yeah. That's so. what, you know, here, fatom fluffy, gaan maar. Yeah, goi. All right, and local good news. What have you, what's come up and that you've got on the site? The most beautiful thing is, I never knew this, I use Hills Pet Nutrition for my kitty cats. Turns out that they sponsor 62 canine dogs in South Africa who are anti-poaching dogs. Um, they are making such a difference. 95% of the poaching arrests in South Africa involved canine dogs and their handlers. Mm -hmm. And so what Hills has done is they have created five really heartwarming, um, like a TV mini series, but it's on YouTube uh, and it's on SA People. Mm -hmm. um, and, it's, and it features five of the handlers and their dogs and these beautiful relationships and how they put their lives at risk and, um, so, so really, really worth watching. It's lovely beautiful. story. Um, and then, of course, we had the photos that you let us know about from Anton Bosman. Yes. Oh, but don't they stunning? Stunning photos of Johannesburg. Yeah. I love the comments. I mean, people just being so moved to see Johannesburg through the eyes of somebody who loves it and who mm. sees the beauty in Johannesburg. And Anton has very kindly. Um, agreed to provide us with another 10 photos that aren't just from the wilds, but are from other parts of Johannesburg. And he's going to do a little write-up as well. So I'll let you okay. know when he does that. Absolutely fantastic. And talking about the wilds, um, starting tomorrow, which is Thursday, um, I stood in for Jeremy Mansfield for Mansfield Today on the travel section. And we're talking to James Delaney, who is the artist and gardening enthusiast who actually was the person who spearheaded the rejuvenation of the of the wilds because of course it had become yeah. a bit of a gangster's paradise it, yeah. he's completely transformed it it's amazing so so um check that out or listen to it as well um and that's on visual. youtube isn't it <laughs> yeah it's going to be on youtube on mansfield two number two day um so go and check that out we've got a lot of good stuff on there as well okay so then i, I see uh oh one of my favorite things as well eco bricks yeah, there's a yes. school being built with eco bricks and yes. eco bricks and are great things so so this isn't deep deep slurt because there's yeah. just so much plastic waste there so yeah. there's this ngo who are is turning all the all the plastic into eco bricks and building a school well, that's why I end up throwing hardly anything away because I recycle pretty much everything and everything I can't recycle um, gets put into eco bricks. There's very, there's so little that I actually throw away every single week. And I'm what do you mean you bricks. put it into eco Are you making your own eco bricks? I make, I, I make eco bricks for a friend of mine who's building a hen house. So oh, I'm sitting nice. in like, I make eco bricks and I stand on them to make sure that they're kind of, you know, <laughs> useful. And they and she's building a, an entire hen coop with it. So that's really great. So that's one way of, yeah. of making sure that your impact on the pro, the, the whole world yeah. is actually kind of mitigated somewhat. We had some South that. Africans staying here the other day and we noticed that they don't have, um, they didn't know what to do with, with plastic bottles. They were putting them in the recycling as they are. Whereas here in Europe, we take bottles and you crush them down to nothing before you put them in the recycling, which I'm surprised South Africa doesn't have, but maybe because you're building all those eco bricks. Because we're building eco bricks and also, yeah. well, half, yeah. of, half of the bottles I keep for eco bricks and the rest get put into the recycling, which goes outside for all the waste pickers. Yeah, and they prefer to have the bottles like that. But then people put their bottles in, they don't take the labels off and they don't take the caps off and things like that. So you need to do that before you actually take it out. But you need to keep the cap for the eco brick. Anyway, enough <laughs> about it. Like, if you want to know how to do it, I'm sure I've got a podcast somewhere that tells Contact me how to make an eco brick. <laughs> okay, so what entertainment have we got? Um, I've, I've been actually sort of scrolling through what's available on places like Showmax and Netflix. But I'm still very, very hooked into BritBox, I have to be honest. <laughs> oh, man. Well, there's, there's on, on Showmax, there's Meet Malusi, which is um, actually coming second to 007 no time to die so that's really what it's a south african story heartwarming a guy who suddenly has to look after his son a, a, a illegitimate son he never knew mm. of until the guy was 16 years old uh, so i think it's a really nice way to hook into south africa and and the fact that it's the second most popular is yeah. is it's pretty good. I did um, see that when I went and because uh, I went online and watched the. I, I suddenly thought, hang on a second, I don't think I've watched this James Bond. How could that have happened? I like Jamesy Bondy. <laughs> and good. did you watch it? 
Did you yes, watch it? Yes, I did. It? I watched it last night. Yeah, I'd managed to have just enough um, space and and energy in my UPS during load shedding to actually finish watching it last oh, night. Yes, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, I think that you guys must have been in lockdown because many South Africans don't seem to have seen it. Yeah, uh, it yeah. was at that time. Yeah, and then what's um, how to ruin Christmas about? Oh, uh, shame. That is on Netflix. And the reason why I mention it is that I'm watching it at the moment because this week, tragically, Busi Lu Rai um, passed away, who's the main actress in it. It's a South African show, um, South African TV series, How to Ruin Christmas. It's funny. It's heartwarming. It's beautiful. And uh, she was only 35 and oh, passed away suddenly. So they're waiting for the autopsy reports and everything. Um, and then something that I thought you and your daughters, except the one has now gone, might, yeah. might enjoy. Oh, okay, we have to is, clarify that. She has, she's just gone to Hoodsprayt yes. okay, to become <laughs> yeah. a game ranger. She's not, she's not home watching telly with mum. It's called Two Sides, and it's by the same people who made Chasing the Sun. And I remember you guys loved Chasing the Sun. Chasing the Sun. Yeah, yeah, because our blood is green. Go, yeah. Boca! <laughs> so, this, so this is also about the Springboks and and the British Irish Lions, and it's got a lot of drama in. Uh, you know, it was during that 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 series was during mm. COVID times. It was during the time when Rassi Erasmus was a little bit contentious. Mm. So um, it's apparently really, really worth watching. Okay, Only available I'll, I'll have a look at that. Africa. Cool. Cool. So, what have you got that's coming up that's interesting on the site on on SA People this coming week? What are you writing this, about? This coming week, there is an international survey that was done around the world with expats in every single country in the world, and we've got what the expats. So, these are expats from other countries, from mm. Sweden and America and Australia, who are living in South Africa. We've got the results of what they said about South Africa, and. Um, there's the unfortunate bit, which is, you know, they weren't that happy with safety, security and public transport. But there are some fabulous things that they love, that South Africa ranked higher than other countries, which is culinary, social life. It's easy to make friends. Um, the surroundings, the sport environment are all fantastic. We are fantastic here in South Africa. They're quite right. Yeah. <laughs> Now we, yeah. we just have to get rid of some stuff and then it would be a wonderful place to be. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to say what. <laughs> All right, so if you are interested to find out more about the stories or um, want to add one of your stories to the entire mix, of course, you can go along to sapeople.com um, on the internet the big thing that keeps us all connected these days thank goodness for that over the last couple of years and of course on facebook where there's a very very busy place and you can post your views and your views as in pictures uh, with jenny and i'm sure that she would love to hear any good news that's coming out of south africa that you have to share or if you're living overseas as well share it right there too jenny thank you very much it's lovely to see your lovely face again and we'll catch up with you again next week thanks mal bye <laughs> Ciao, ciao.